Hello YouTube, this is Dragonheart and welcome to part 3 of my overview series. This time we'll be looking at the Odrissian Kingdom. So, they have a promise of loot, minus 50% mercenary recruitment cost and rapid campaigns, plus 50% mercenary upkeep costs, much like the Getai and the RDI. The things which are different this time though is they are raiders, so they get plus 100% income from raiding, which is slightly less than what the RDI have, they have plus 200. They have Hellenic enmity, so they have minus 20 to diplomacy with all Hellenic factions. So that means if you go into war with Macedon, or with Epirus, or um, Greece, oh not Greece, <laughs> Athens or Sparta, then obviously you're going to have a big uh, penalty with your diplomacy. They also have deadly aim, which gives them a plus two experience rank for missile recruits. So if you are looking to use your slingers and archers, this could be the good faction for you. This could be the faction you want to play as. Anyway, I'm going to... Oh, actually, before we go, we're going to look at the victory conditions. So, hold 80 settlements, raise or sack 35 different settlements, and completely control the following six provinces, either by direct ownership or through military allies. So they have Italy, Persis, Illyria, Syria, Macedonia, and Thracia, and also maintain 240 units in total. For economic victory, it's hold 50 settlements, raise or sack 25 different settlements, uh, control these provinces by here. I'm not going to read them all out. They're there to be good for you to read. Maintain trade relations with 15 factions. Hold at least one of every strategic resource. At the end of your turn, have an income of at least 90,000 talents. And then for the cultural victory, it's completely control the following provinces, either by direct ownership or through military allies. And again, six provinces uh, listed here. And then hold at least one settlement in 40 provinces in which your culture is dominant. So without further ado, I will start the campaign, and I shall see you all on the campaign map. Okay, so here we are now on the campaign map. Like the other two factions, you have to completely control two provinces, either by direct ownership or through military allies, and that gives you the reward of 2,500 coins. And here we start. So we start in Odessos. We have one settlement that we begin with, and Odessos can actually be expanded and you can build a quarry, artisan's lodgings, sacred enclosure or enclosed land straight off the bat. You can also upgrade your port to a harbour or fisherman's hut and you can upgrade your barbarian hamlet to a barbarian village. So on the faction we are barbarian, our prosperity is destitute, we have 3000 in the treasury, we are Balkan tribe so we get promise of loot and rapid campaigns like I mentioned previously and these are the other um, traits and uh, abilities that you can get which I read at the start of this video. We have one of two armies and one of one fleet. We also have a dignitary this time, so don't have a champion like the other two factions. This is our dignitary over here, so we're going to move him to Pulpadiva straight away. May as well. There we go. What can we recruit? What do we have? So we have Thracian skirmishers. Thracian cavalry and Thracian nobles. Now I'm quite excited with this faction because the other two factions I reviewed um, they seem to have a lot of copy and paste units but at least with this faction I get the sense they are Thracian they have Thracian units so they're not just a copy and paste even the general is a Thracian noble so it's not really a culture we've had yet in this game so it actually feels like a new faction compared to the other two uh, technology I'm assuming yeah, is the same as the technology tree in all other factions in this game. We have a ship as well called the Raiders of the Sea, which I'm pretty sure is the name of the other ship I had with the RDI over here. Where are they gone? I'm sure they had the same ship. Uh, diplomacy, we should probably check diplomacy. So we are disliked by Macedon, by Tribali, by Bithynia, by Cimmeria, by Pontus, Bastani, a neutral, the Katiroi. Getai, Royal Scythia and Tylus are all neutral so very easily everybody around you could hate you in this campaign. Now Odrissian Kingdom would be a challenging campaign to play as especially on legendary difficulty especially with Radius or Divide and Conquer on. They would be a great faction to play as and I may actually play as these at some point in the future in my campaign so the DLC might be worth it just for this faction but don't quote me on that I have to play this campaign a little bit first to see how good I think this faction could be. I want to look at what are the units they can recruit as well. So let's have a look 
we can recruit some Thracian warriors. They look nice, don't they? Thracian warriors, 420 to recruit. They have 45 melee attack and 51 weapon damage. And Thracian skirmishers, which we already have a few of. So we, what we're going to do is we're going to click end turn and we're going to see what happens after the first end turn. Now the reason I do this is because I like to see if the AI does anything to me, like declare war, just to see what the di diplomatic penalty is like at the start of the game, without me actually attributing to anybody being at war with me. So we'll have a quick look now, once this end turn finishes, and no, nobody declared war against me in the end turn, so I'm a little bit disappointed actually, because I was hoping that with the penalty that we have, people would start to declare war with me in the first turn, but they didn't. So that's a bit of a disappointment, but other than that, I don't mind this faction, I think they're going to be pretty good to play as. And I'm probably going to end this video here. Next up we'll have this faction over here, Tylus. But I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope it's helped you out a little bit and given you a quick insight into the Odrissian Kingdom. I've been Dragonheart, until next time, goodbye.